Good morning. I'm Jake, and this is Gemini. Who here watches the English Premier League? So, bad news. Seven out of the ten most expensive transfers in league history were complete failures. There's probably some NFL fans here. 32 teams spent $4.2 billion in free agency last year. Only 14 won more games this year. I believe the reason for this is the decision maker is not close enough to the data. Every day, talented and hardworking data scientists bring a stack of insights to their executives, put it on their desk, and get maybe the top page read, maybe the page beneath that. Usually they walk back down the hallway, ask a question, and there isn't time to make an answer, in time to affect the decision. But AI is here, and it's changing everything. And there's already technology around that's helping us get answers faster. We all want data to be actionable and useful. Teams have done an incredible job describing what's happened, why it's happened, and even started to make some predictions. At Gemini Sports Analytics, we help teams think about what might happen, how likely it is to happen, and what we can do about it next. We achieve that through an application layer built on top of the best data architecture, already trusted by banks, military, and manufacturing. So we make it very easy to bring in all of your existing data sources or work on top of our scalable data pipelines and then access something called automated machine learning, which means instead of spending a month building one machine learning model at a time by hand, you can access dozens all at once in an hour or a day. <clears throat> Let's look at an example. I'm a Major League Soccer general manager. We just sold our best player. I want to find a replacement. So I want to find undervalued players, compare different examples, and then maybe I want to look at a different league outside of Major League Soccer. So I'm going to ask some what-if scenarios or look at our model capabilities so I understand the confidence in this prediction with no black boxes. I can upload files, explore my own database, engineer new features, and even start a completely new project, like a classification, understanding different outcomes, a regression with a single point prediction, or a time series forecast, understanding what's going to happen over subsequent seasons. Teams could build this themselves if they wanted to spend millions of dollars, hire a lot more staff, and wait several years to operationalize and derive value. Consultants are currently offering some similar solutions, but they're not doing it affordably and they're not handing tools to the users. We offer this off the shelf very affordably. We also bring subject matter expertise because our whole founding team experienced these problems themselves. When I had to teach myself MATLAB and Python in my PhD, I knew that there was a better way. Our staff, advisors, and investors come from the very top of the sports, data, and enterprise software worlds. And we raised a venture round last year, launched our product at the end of the year, and already have actually now seven signups. We just got our first one in Australia. And that represents just under a half a million dollars in booked revenue. Our pipeline's pretty full, so we're hiring as fast as we can. Our go-to-market strategy revolves around the buying cycles of each major season as we build new data pipelines and new templated foundational models for each sport. This is just the beginning of our mission to lower the risk of the most expensive decisions that each team has to make on which players they want on their team, how to develop them and keep them healthy, and which tactics to play. We achieve that by putting into the decision maker's hands the first sports-specific, no-code, predictive analytics platform. Thank you. Can you go back to the, uh, the slide where it kind of had the leagues? Um, and there we go. Um, so, I mean, this is, uh, hits a little close to home in my current free agency uh, with the uh, feature pipeline there. Um, so, for talent classifications, um, if you were to evaluate any player, say, entering free agency, say, an eighth-year veteran, you know, nothing specific, um, you know, what, what, what kind of metrics, um, what things do you use that really encapsulate, uh, encapsulate value outside of, you know, the, the simple metrics of statistics that are already used and accessible? Yeah, it, it's a good question, Joe, and I think it's, it's important to clarify um, what metrics are being focused on is, is a combination of what the user chooses and what features they engineer and then whatever the model produces. So it's not up to us. We're not competing on insights. We're providing capabilities. So 
For example, if we partnered with Pro Football Focus, um, probably the Patriots personnel staff could look at what the model is predicting for how you might perform compared to um, you know, other athletes of similar prices, and then maybe your agent could look at the model in a smarter way and show why you're likely to perform at a high level for three years longer than some of the other cheaper options. So sports teams are notoriously uh, bad customers because they think they should get everything for free. How has it been? I mean, it seems like you've had some good conversions with teams, but uh, how has the sales process to the market been so far? Yeah, you're, you're right about that for sure. Um, so we found that by baking in a, a trial period, we're able to gain trust. So, you know, enterprise software is tricky because it takes a little while to onboard and you want to demonstrate value to all of the stakeholders involved um, before people really understand a price point. So we found if we can onboard a single user and solve a single problem within 90 days, we can land and expand from there. That's why we've lowered our prices really for the first customer in each league and the first half dozen overall, and then hopefully we can double and triple in the next few years. Give us a little bit more on that process and the, you know, when you go in and you're solving one problem, how does that, how does that actually work in terms of what you're communicating your value proposition is going to be? And, uh, um, differentiating yourself from you know all the other platforms and data analysis and even the data capture companies that exist out there. Yeah, so those data capture companies are, are frustrated because their customers are not seeing enough value derived from all that data. They're not building something predictive on top, right? It's all descriptive right now. So typically we ask a, a team in the sales process, what's something that you don't have time for or something that you would do if you had a $250,000 machine learning engineer on your staff? Um, and then we work to build through that problem together side by side. Uh, it's very similar to, to when GPS first came into sports, actually, I had a biz dev right behind you, worked for Catapult, and people were looking at that data, and when they came off the field with all the data capture, staff would sit alongside them and say, this is what you should be looking at, and this is what you can get out of it. And so that's what we're doing now, is we're, we're spending the first three months with the customer saying, okay, this is what you're looking at, these are the buttons to click, this is how you can communicate it to stakeholders, and then we build from there. Thanks. Any questions from the audience, perhaps? Thank, Thank you. you.